So this area right here is what you're looking at with the observation video. So if you haven't watched that yet, start there. Um, take a look for both Model A and Model B, what you're noticing in terms of distances between the Earth and the Sun at those different locations. And it actually ended up being four locations um, in the diagram. And the four locations are for the four seasons, right? The four different time periods of our year. So we're noticing two things from the model, what we observed about the distance between the sun and the earth, so the globes and the light bulb, and then we want to diagram this out. So because there's four locations, a lot of people were putting the four points around the sun or the light bulb and then circling it up or connecting the dots essentially. Because what we're drawing here is the path of the, oops, the earth around the sun. So we want to see that fluidly. So we want to draw and connect the dots. That's what the orbit is looking at. And once you have that orbit drawn in, you should be able then to associate the diagram you drew to a shape. One of them is going to be more elliptical and one of them is going to be more circular. So the circle, of course, a little circle, right? Ellipse is a fancy astronomy word for oval. That's what ellipse is looking at. Okay, so you should be able to decide this diagram is either an ellipse or a circle, and then this would be the other. Now, based on what you've noticed in your diagrams then from the models, we should be able to do a little prediction on what's going on with temperature and light intensity in each one of those models. So when we think about between seasons, some of our keywords might be like warmer and cooler or really similar, more consistent, more extreme. Those are the kind of observations that we're making here. And then intensity, kind of similar to yesterday, we're thinking about more concentrated or more spread out. So that's what our observations are gonna be here. So then you're just pulling your data together, which model A or B is gonna be more consistent, what, what makes you think that, and then same thing here, number three, which model A or B is going to be more extreme between the seasons, what makes you think that, okay? So give a little explanation. Statement about effect of variation in the shape of orbit and the intensity of solar light hitting Earth. Pick one of them to talk about. When the orbit is more circular, here's what I notice about intensity and solar radiation. When the orbit is more elliptical, here's what I notice. So pick one, right? Pick one of those to talk about. And remember, this is an explore. So if you're feeling like, oh, I'm not sure, you know, just go back to your observations. What did you notice, right? What are you observing? And then you're just explaining it out, connecting the dots, okay? Here you're looking at a diagram similar to what we saw up top. Noticing here locations A and B. That's what we're thinking about when we're answering these questions down here. So you're just circling up which one makes the most sense, mild or extreme. And then the third part, you're looking at some graphs. So this first section, you're doing a lot of relationship statements, okay? So remember relationship is simply thinking about the first variable compared to the second one, and when one changes, how does that impact the other? So you can use this outline as you go. So looking at the graph, relationship between ten temperature, which is the pink line, and solar intensity or irradiance, that's the blue purple line. So when, and you get to decide, when temperature either increases, what do we notice about solar intensity? When it decreases, what do we know? So you pick one. Same thing here, relationship with tilt and intensity. Thinking about what we saw from day one, right? When there's, you can decide when there's more tilt. So when tilt increases, here's what I noticed about intensity. 
when tilt decreases, what do I notice about intensity? So pick one of those relationships to think about. Go back to your data if you need to. Number three, relationship, right? What is noticed about the orbit and solar intensity? So when the orbit increases or becomes more oval, elongated, what do we notice? Or when it's decreased, more circular, what do we notice? And then this one isn't shown on the graph or the lab. It's just a thinking question. What's going to be the relationship between Arctic ice and tilt? So there's more ice or less ice when the tilt is like this. And this last part here, you're looking at three areas on the graph. Time period A is the red, B is the blue, C is the green. You're just using these key words to fill in the table. So is the tilt more or less in time period A? Is the orbit more circular or elliptical? Is it a warmer time or a cooler time? Or maybe somewhere in between. So like for time period A, looking at the tilt, well, I see A line is crossing tilt right here. So when I read what tilt that is, well, that's a greater, a time of greater tilt. So I would record in my table more, right? More tilt. Looking at time A, the orbit, right? It's crossing the orbit path here. So when I look at the scale of orbit shape, well, that's going to be more on the elliptical side. So I'm going to say elliptical, right? So I'm just looking at where the time period crosses that data and recording what I see. Is it more? Is it less? Circular? Elliptical? Is it somewhere in between? That's what you're thinking about for your three time periods. And that's where we're really working to get to today. Remember, these bottom pages are just directions. So as soon as you get to here, you can go ahead and submit.